Hi, my name is Rebecca Wright. I'm really glad that you're joining me. Just a heads up, I have a cat that's very clinging, so I might have to like shuffle around a little bit to like <laughs> make accommodations for her. She's not feeling all that great. And so, you know, I'm going to read out of 1 Peter chapter 4. I'm going to start out in verse 12, and I'm going to read on down through 19. The Bible tells us that Jesus was a man well acquainted with sorrows. And we know just from the crucifixion and the death on the cross that he suffered, and he suffered greatly. And uh, Peter also was a man acquainted with suffering and grief. And, you know, after the pouring out of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost, he became a great evangelist. He, he spoke with a lot of power. And, uh, and so, but he was acquainted with um, trials and sufferings and and various hardships and uh, and when he died he died on the cross and he died uh, upside down because he did not consider himself worthy to die in the same manner of Christ and so it's a pretty harsh death but he was not afraid of suffering he, he went to his uh, his calling and he went to it uh, in obedience to the Lord and uh, with boldness and so we can learn a lot from his instructions on suffering and, and trials and various uh, things that he went through. And, and so he's speaking to the church and he's giving instructions to the church. And I'm just going to read the whole thing in its entirety and kind of let the scripture speak for itself. So it says, Dear friends, don't be surprised at the fiery trials you are going through, as if something strange were happening to you. Instead, be very glad, for these trials make you partners with Christ in his sufferings, so that you will have the wonderful joy of seeing his glory when it is revealed to all the world. If you are insulted because you bear the name of Christ, you will be blessed, for the glorious Spirit of God rests upon you. If you suffer, however, it must not be for murder, stealing, making trouble, or praying into other or prying into other people's affairs but it is no shame to suffer for being a Christian praise God for the privilege of being called by his name for the time has come for judgment and it must begin with God's household and it and if judgment begins with us what terrible fate awaits those who have never obeyed God's good news and also if the righteous are barely saved, what will happen to the godless sinner? So if you are suffering in a manner that pleases God, keep on doing what is right and trust your lives to God who created you, for he will never fail you. It's powerful. That entire instruction, there's just so much to it, packed into it, that is just so powerful. The good news is that Christ came, God in man, living a sinless life. He who knew no sin became sin so that we may live to the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We are alive in Christ and we wear his righteousness. We have none of our own. He came, he was God in man he suffered he died and he rose again that is the good news the good news is that by his death we are forgiven of our sins and we now have the opportunity to live with God in eternity we're all gonna live forever the Bible makes it very clear that we're all gonna live forever it's just where do you want to live what do you want your residence to be do you want it to be heavenly or hellish? It's up to us. So this verse that stood out to me the most, verse 18, and also, if the righteous are barely saved, what will happen to the godless sinner? So if you are suffering in a manner that pleases God, Keep on doing what is right and trust your lives to God who created you, for he will never fail you. That's verse 18 and 19. 
if the righteous are barely saved, what will happen to the godless sinner? You know, when I read that, it gave me even more of a desire to proclaim the name of Jesus, to share the good news, even with people that I don't really like and don't really like me, even with the people that have done me great harm. It made me all the more conscious that excuse me we're all going to live forever but where do we want to live what will happen to the godless people the bible makes it very clear what's going to happen the residence is going to be in the belly of the earth and hell is a very real place for the people that don't believe in hell it believes in you. But the good news is, so does God. He sees great potential in you, regardless of the sins that you've committed. He sees great potential, and He has thoughts and plans, and He longs and yearns that you would turn your feet away from evil and that you would walk in a righteous path. He longs for that. God is slow in anger and abounding in loving kindness and mercy. And he longs to have mercy on us. I may have people that I'm very angry with and, and I'm working with the Lord for forgiveness. But God is so ready to forgive us all. And as far as the east is to the west, he remembers it no more. Brothers and sisters, are we sharing the gospel with people that are not saved? How important is it that we follow his commandments and do the Great Commission? We can show in our lifestyle that we really are following after Christ not just by walking in legalism as far as the things that we do and how we live, that's important, yes, but also walking in the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control, forgiveness, mercy, compassion. Are we walking in Christ-likeness? He desires mercy rather than sacrifice. He desires that we have mercy on other people. You know, it took the Lord a while to get me to pray for my enemies. I I prayed for my enemies, but they were not flowery prayers, I'll tell you that. And there were certain prayers that he gave me out of scripture that he wanted me to pray. Um, prayers for justice, prayers for, um, you know, for him to make the scales right. And it wasn't the most flowery prayer, but he actually gave it to me in, out of scripture. And, but then he started requiring me to pray other prayers. And uh, that was not the easiest thing to step into. And I'm there now, stepping into that. But isn't this exciting how I feel like I'm on a journey with each one of you, each one of you that watch these videos, these messages, I feel like I'm on a journey with you because I'm just as much growing as everybody else. I am certainly not arrived at any place. I'm, uh, I, there's a lot of work on me that God needs to do. However, he's done a lot of work and I am not the same woman that I used to be. And I am definitely starting to match up with who I feel like I am on the inside. And so my behaviors, my outer man is starting to reflect what my inner man was and, and is. And so the core me, I feel like is beginning to be shown. That's who I really am on the inside. And, uh, and so that's a wonderful feeling. That's a great place to be, but it took the Lord some real breaking and remaking to get me here. And, uh, and so, but I feel like I'm on a journey with each one of you 
the the breaking and remaking the molding and the um, you know being on the potter's spinning wheel and being created into Christ likeness and the beauty of it is is that we have that glorious hope but are we sharing it are we sharing the Great Commission are we going out and sharing Jesus with love and kindness and peace and patience and goodness and gentleness and self-control are we do we act or react when we're not able to handle things do we go to people and speak to them properly or do we just flip out do we have that self-control to um, walk in balance or are we just all over the place you know I was all over the place for quite some time and it took the Lord a while to work with me but people saw that I was growing and and that he was working with me and so do people see that in you do they see that you're growing that that you really are changing that there is a difference there should be some sort of change in us and there should be a constant continuous it shouldn't just be once and it's done this is a journey that we walk walking we're moving forward we're not just taking a step and we're there we're walking with Christ this is a journey that we're walking out so for the people that don't know him and maybe they're really good people people that you love and care about do you hold back out of fear embarrassment worry not wanting to be rejected wanting to be accepted knowing that they may even reject it so what but did you share it his word will not return void and when we share the Lord Jesus Christ with people and we share scripture God can do something with that and the truth of the matter is what will happen to them if we don't and what will happen to them if we do sharing Christ with somebody just may mean their salvation and their lives never being the same and an address in Zion an, a residence in the heavenly Jerusalem in a spot in heaven and not hell are we sharing the Lord with people are we going out of our way to show people kindness and forgiveness even those that have hurt us greatly are we going out of our way to work with the Lord to pray for them and forgive them and desire good things for them anyway and I wouldn't say that my desire for good things is uh, a new car or something like that my desire for my enemies is the truth of the Lord that he would set them free from themselves that they would have freedom from bondage and freedom from uh, anger and resentment and malice and hate and rage those kind of things um, the same freedom that Christ gave me my prayer is that they have that freedom too and, and that they are able to walk in freedom and live in freedom and and have a life in freedom that is my prayer for my enemies and it's my prayer for my family and salvation uh, you want to see a real change in the darkness pray for people's salvation and share the Lord with them proclaim the name of Christ you're called by his name are we going out and sharing the Great Commission are we making it clear to our co-workers that we know the Lord are we letting people know that we stand for righteousness and that we will not um, compromise on that? Do people see steadfast and steady? Do they see love regardless? 
it's so important, brothers and sisters, because what's the alternative? What will happen to them? Well, we know the answer. And so I just encourage us all to be bold, to be bold to share the name of Christ, regardless of what we may suffer. Because remember, Peter starts out with, dear friends, don't be surprised at the fiery trials you're going through, as if something strange were happening to you. Instead, be very glad, for these trials make you partners with Christ in his sufferings, so that you will have the wonderful joy of seeing his glory when it is revealed to all the world. If you are insulted because of you bear the name of Christ, you will be blessed for the glorious Spirit of God rests upon you. If you suffer, however, it must not be for murder, stealing, making trouble, prying into other people's affairs, but it is no shame to suffer for being a Christian. Don't be afraid to be rejected or mocked or laughed at or look down upon if you share Christ. Don't worry about what people might say. But remember, what's the alternative? What will happen to the godless sinner? There's no shame in being a Christian. Praise God for the privilege of being called by his name. For the time has come for judgment. And if judgment begins with us, because it begins in the household of God. God's not going to judge the world first. He's going to judge the members of his household. Does that mean that he's going to judge us? Those that truly belong to Christ, those to, in whom he's going to say, well done, thy good and faithful servant, he's also going to judge our works. How, what did we do with the ta talents that he gave us? What did we do with the time that we had available? How obedient were we to all the opportunities that he gave us to share him with other people? Did we step out in Holy Spirit boldness and share the name of Christ? Did we take the opportunity, understanding that what will happen to the godless sinner when we already know the answer? That's what he's going to judge. He's going to burn up our works. And, uh, and I know that a lot of my works that are going to be burnt up in the past are just going to be dust. But I desire and I yearn for the works that I do here on out to be crowns and jewels for the Lord. Something that I can give to him. And so I encourage all of us to think about that. Think heavenly Think heavenly and think of the godless sinner and what the alternative is, what will happen to them. And step out in boldness and share the Great Commission, share the good news of Christ. And so with that, I hope you're blessed. I hope you got something out of that. I love you all. I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.